Bisyata Dishmaya, we're going to learn Tafyut Ches. We're going to start from the beginning of the next Perak, Perak Oisin Pasin, that starts towards the end of Tafyut Zayin, Omid Beis. Says the Mishnah, Oisin Pasin Lebirois. The first section of this Perak is going to be discussing Pase Birois. Birois, a Be'er, is a well. We'll soon see whether there's a difference between a boyer and a Be'er, a Be'er being a well with a spring with a constant source of water, boyer being just a pit with stagnant water in it. But either way, if you had a boyer, a be'er, in a Rishus Harabim, and a be'er itself being that it's four tfachim wide, four by four tfachim wide, and ten tfachim deep, the be'er has the status of a Rishus Hayochid. The area surrounding the be'er was a Rishus Harabim. And the people coming to Yerushalayim, the Oile Golim, who needed either for themselves to drink, they needed the animals to drink, we'll discuss that later. So the Chachomim made a leniency that seems to go against some of the halachas that we know in carrying on Shabbos. And they made a, this leniency to allow us to carry the water, to draw the water, to remove the water from the Be'er to the area surrounding the Be'er. Even though carrying from Roshus HaYochi to Roshus HaRabim is seriously awesome, so they had to find some way of easily creating an area called Roshus HaRabim just beyond the Be'er. And the way they did that, even in spite of the fact that it was Roshus HaRabim, is with something called Pasin. What are Pasin? Pasin are boards. And normally, an area to be called Rishos HaYochid, it has to be surrounded somewhat with walls. Over here, what they did was, they used boards, pasin, and these pasin, we'll soon see how they worked, that these pasin would encircle the Be'er, and the area within the pasin now has the status of Rishos HaYochid. How did it work? Arbo'o diyumdin. The word diyumdin, diyu, in Aramaic is tu, the, the, the madin, the mudin, is the amudim, is posts. If you have a single corner post that actually comprises two posts, two, a post in two directions, if you have a right angled piece of wood, which is similar to a type of a gutter, and you, you stand it, for example, if on the south eastern corner, you put one of these diyumdin, one of these double posts, which is the post itself is an amma facing in one direction and an amma facing another direction. You have one amma going from north to south, another amma going from west to east. And these two is a single post. You stand it on the south on the south eastern corner, you have a single post with an amma in each direction, and if you put one of these on all four corners, it's so to speak as if you've encircled the entire area with a mechitza, providing that the area between one post and the next is not more than, we'll soon see, it's going to be Machlokas, Rabbi Yehuda and Rabbi Meir. So Rabbi Yehuda, which is the Tana we're learning now, he says you put Arba Ad Yumdin, you put four of these posts, Nirin Kashmoyna, it looks as if you've got eight posts, because as we explained, each post is, so to speak, two posts. So on every edge, on every side of this area, you've got, so to speak, two posts of an Amma each, and the two posts in each corner are connected to create what we call a Dyumdin. So that's what Rabbi Yehuda says, Divir Rabbi Yehuda. Rabbi Shmoyna, you have eight posts, Nirin Kishnei Mosar. How does that work? Rabbi Meir says you need to have eight, you, you don't have four posts, he says you need eight posts, and then it will look like twelve, which means he agrees with Rabbi Yehuda that you have four posts, one in each corner, each one being two posts. Besides for that, on every side of this area, you have another post in the middle, a single post. So altogether, you have, altogether you ha you're using eight posts, and it looks like twelve, because four of them are single posts, and four of them are double posts. Arba, four of them are doomed in, or double posts, but arba, and four of them are single, single posts. 
Goivon, how tall do these posts have to be? As with all Mechitzas, Asara Tvachim, they have to be 10 Tvachim high. Verochbon, how wide do each of these posts have to be? Shisha, 6 Tvachim, which is 1 Amma. Veoivyon, how thick do they have to be? Kol Shuhu, it doesn't make a difference. It can be any thickness. Ubeinehem, how much distance are you allowed to have between one Diyumad and the next? And that's again going to be Machlai, because Rabbi and Rabbi Yehuda. Reb Meir says, you have to be able to have six, in two teams, Revokis or a team, two teams of three oxen each, and they're going to be tied together, as we're going to see in a moment. And if you have two such teams, which means the width of six oxen, that's as wide. That means if you have six oxen, simultaneously going through this breach, through this opening, three going in, three going out, that's as much as you're allowed to have in between one post and the next. Divir Reb Meir, that's Reb Meir's opinion, and that's actually ten Amis. Reb Yehuda, Oimir, Reb Yehuda says you're allowed even more than that. He says, Shel Arba. Four, every, there were two teams of oxen, each one comprising four oxen, one team going in, one team going out, and they are all standing next to each other, going in and out simultaneously, and that is more than ten amos, it's actually thirteen and a third amos. Kshurois, these teams of oxen have to be tied, or is the distance that they are when they are tied, when they're tied, they're even closer to each other than if they're not tied. Veloy mutaris, and not untied. We'll see in the Gemara why we have a double term, kshurois veloy mutaris. Achas nechneses veachas yeitzes. One team facing in, one team facing out, and that gives you a little bit more leeway, since they're in different directions, it takes up that little bit more space. Mutar lahakriv lebe'er. How close do these diumdin have to be or allowed to be to the be'er itself? It makes no difference. As long as the area between one post and the next is not more than 10 amas according to Reb Meir and 13 and a third amas according to Reb Yehuda, as long as the gaps are not larger than that, you can position them anywhere you want relative to the be'er. However, However, it must be, there's a gap of at least two amus, which is the head plus most of the body of the ox, of the animal, space between the edge of the bear, of the well, and the edge of the, and the inner edge of the, these diumdin. And that way it can drink from from the well, it can drink from a vessel that's standing next to the well with most of itself, its body, the animal's body being within this newly created Rishos HaYochit. Mutal Harchik Kol what's the maximum width of this, of the area surrounded by Diyumdin surrounding this Be'er? It doesn't matter, Kol, as much as you want. Ubilvad Sheyar Pasim, providing that you, the gaps are not larger than 10 Amas according to Reb Meir, and 13 and a third Amas according to Reb Yehuda. And if it is wider, just make sure you add extra Pasin Shutim, the basic straight boards in between one and the next, to make sure the gaps are not too big. Reb Yehuda Oymer Ad Beisosayim. Reb Yehuda says that the maximum area that they allowed you to encircle with a Be'er in the middle is the size of Beisosayim, which is 100 Amas by 50 Amas. Omruloi. Chachomim said to Rabbi Yehuda, Loi omru beisosayim elo legino u lekarpeif. They only ever said the restriction of beisosayim when you have an area of, which is not really used, it's not been encircled to be used by, by normal, a normal residential purposes for normal human behavior and human, human uses. And for example, a gino, a garden, a carpef, or some other very wide area which has not been encircled for residential purposes. However, avalim hoy or dir, or sahar, or muktza, or if it's a type of a pen, a type of an area where 
where the animals are staying, they are serving people, and we'll see later that the shepherds themselves would sleep in these areas, or if it was a backyard, or a courtyard, or any of those which are used for normal, so to speak, residential purposes, then afilu beis chamisha kurim, even if the, it's an area of five kur, afilu beis hasara kurim, even if it's ten kur, mutter, one is allowed to encircle it. And we'll understand later why Rabbi Yehuda gave this restriction, because Dyumdin are not regular walls. Like we saw previously at the end of the previous parak, that when you have a mechitza gerua, a mechitza that's only upright, or mechitza that's only horizontal, it's not a solid mechitza. There were certain restrictions they made with allowing us to use these walls. Here too, Dyumdin is a huge leniency, because most of the area of each side is breached, Exactly how it works is very complicated. We're not going to discuss that here. But the Chachomim allowed us to do this, even though it's Porot Merubah I made. But Rav Yehuda held there were certain restrictions. You can only do it up to Beis Hosaim. Umuta laharchik kol shehu, umirvalt sheyar bepasim. And again, the Mishnah is saying that it doesn't matter how wide you make it, just make based on the restrictions we just saw now, but make sure that the any one gap is not more than 10 amas according to Rabbi Meir, and not more than 13 and a third according to Rabbi Huda. Says the Gemara, Can we assume that our Mishnah is not like Hananya? The Tanya, Oisin Pasin Leboir. Hananya said that you're allowed to make, you're allowed to use these corner posts, which we call Pasim, for a boyer, for a pit. The Chavolin le Shayara. And this is the Mishnah that we saw earlier on, on Daftar Zainamad base, that you're allowed to use a wall of Chavolin, which is only horizontal strips, strings, ropes, whatever they are, just horizontal pieces with air spaces in between. And you're allowed to use that just for a shayara, for a caravan, for a group of people who are stranded in an open field on Shabbos and they have no other options. That's the Tanakama in the Brisa. The Chananya Oimir, Chavolin, you can use Chavolim Leboir for to be able to encircle a pit. Avaloi Pasin, but you're not allowed to use Pasin since Pasin is Porutz Marubala Oimid. Hananya says you're not allowed to use Pasin for a boyer. Here we see in our Mishnah, Oisin Pasin Labirois, you're allowed to make Pasin for a boyer. So the Gemara is asking, is our Mishnah arguing with Hananya? Says the Gemara, no, Afilotema Hananya. It could be our Mishnah conforms with Hananya. Boyer Lachud, or Boyer Lachud. We'll notice, as we pointed out, our Mishnah is talking about a Be'er, which is a, we a well of water that's not going to dry out, or we, we can assume that it shouldn't dry out. And therefore, we're not worried that people are going to use the area encircled by Pasim when there's no ability of drawing water. And therefore, we allow you to use these Pasim to encircle the area with Pasim. A boyer, which is just a pit of stagnant water, it's very possible it will get emptied, it will dry out, and then there will be no permission to use these pasim to carry in, and people will not realize that, and they might by mistake carry there. And therefore, to avoid that, Hananya said, you're only allowed to encircle an area with a boyer, with a pit, with strings, not with pasim. Strings is not porots murubalo imid. Pasim is porots murubalo imid. So if we can, un we can understand there's a difference between boir, boir and beir, we understand how the Mishnah says you can use pasim, and Hananya says you cannot use pasim. That was one version of reading the, the Mishnah with Hananya. Ikd Amra, there was another version. Mid loika toni Hananya, we're starting with Hananya. Hananya said that, that chavolim le boir, avoloi le pasim. And Hananya just mentioned Boyer. Hananya did not explicitly say only Boyer, not Be'er. So the Gemara is being Medayak according to this version. Mid Katoni Hananya, Oisin Chavolim le Boyer, Upasim le Be'er. Since he didn't explicitly say that you have to use strings if it's a Boyer, but if it's a Be'er, if it's live water, if it's a spring water, you're allowed to use Pasim, Michlal. I can understand from there. De le Hananya, loishna boyer, loishna beir, chavolin in, pasim loy. We can understand that Hananya, who's speaking about a boyer, it was not only a boyer, it's either a boyer 
or a Ba'ir, and in neither of them you're allowed to use Pasim. And then we can ask, and then we have a very legitimate question or assumption. Hanani is arguing with our Mishnah that says explicitly, Oisin Pasim Lebirois. Says the Gemara, no, Afilute Mechananya. It could be Hanania agrees that there's a difference between Boir and Ba'ir. And why did Hanania only say that Chavolim le Boir Avaloi Pasim? Why didn't he explicitly say Ba'ir? He was responding to the Tanakama. What did the Tanakama say? Oisin Pasim le Boir Vechavolim le Shayora. That you're allowed to use Pasim for a Boir. So Hanania said, you cannot use Pasim for a Boir. But he didn't mean to say that you also cannot use Pasim for Ba'ir. He just wasn't talking about the Ba'ir because the Tanakama were not talking about the Ba'ir. And indeed, in the case of a Ba'ir, you could use Pasim exactly like it says in our Mishnah. Continues the Gemara. Leima Masnisin Deloika Rabakiva. Can we assume that our Mishnah is not following the opinion of Rabakiva? Ditnan. Echod Ba'ir Horabim. Uboir Horabim. Uba'ir hayochid, irrespective of whether it's a ba'ir of light of spring water, which, or which belongs to the public, or a boir horabim, or just a pit with stagnant water that belongs to the public, uba'ir hayochid, or a ba'ir that belongs to a private individual, in all of those, oisim le'em pasim, we're allowed to make these pasim and rely on pase birois. Aval boir Hayachid, if it's also just a boyer of stagnant water, and also it does not belong to the rabbim, and if there's a rabbim, then if it gets emptied, they will remind each other, hey, you can't carry anymore, there's no water in the pit. But, and it belongs to a yachid, to a private person, and then there'll be nobody to remind anyone, to, to remind each other, when you're not allowed to use the pasim anymore, if you have both disadvantages, also boyer, also boyer, and also which was, uh, belongs to a yachid, then you have to make a regular mechitza of ten tvachim high, divir rebakiva, and you cannot rely on pasim. What do we see from rebakiva? Rebakiva says that the boyer horabim, if it, belo- it has to belong to the public, but if even if it's a boyer, not just a beir, even if it's stagnant water, you're allowed to use pasim. Not like our Mishnah that seems to say that you do pasim for a beir, not for a boyer. Vi'ilu hachen, our Mishnah, k'toni lebirois, is talking about a well with spring water, lebirois in, lebirois loy, as we saw before, that we're assuming that our Mishnah is only talking about a ba'ir, not a boyer. And that seems to contradict Rabbi Kiva, who says that even a boyer, providing it belongs to the rabbim, you're allowed to, you're allowed to rely on these pasim. Says the Gemara, no, a filotem rebakiva, it could even be rebakiva, be'er maim chaim de psikale, loishno de rabim, veloishno de yachit ktoni, boir mochunosim de loy psikale, loy ktoni. No, it could be that rebakiva and our Mishnah. I'll have the same opinion. And now we're learning that our Mishnah, not like before, now we're saying that Birois. When it says oisin pasim le birois for be'er, a be'er you can always make pasim, irrespective of whether it belongs to the public or if it doesn't belong to the public, and that's why it says oisin pasim le birois. But the Mishnah will agree that even if it's a boyer, if it belongs to the rabbim, you're allowed to. That's what it means. Be'er ma'im chaim de psikale loish no de rabbim loish no de yachid katoni regarding a be'er where. It's the halach of oisin pasin ibirois is across the board. Any be'er you can do it, irrespective of if it's rabim, if it's yachid. Ketoni, that's what the Mishnah was talking about. Boyer, but boy, a regular boyer, which is mukhunosin, which is stagnant water, delay psikale. It's not always true that you can use pasim because you can only use the pasim if it belongs to the rabim. Like Ketoni, the Mishnah didn't mention it. But the Mishnah also holds that a boyer that belongs to the rabbim, you can do pasim like Rabbi Kiva. And it's not the way we learn the Mishnah when we're trying to say that the Mishnah is conforming with Hanania's opinion. And all the Gemara here is trying to do is to explain that you cannot bring proof from our Mishnah from the fact that it says pasim le birois, you cannot bring proof that it's not Hanania and you cannot bring proof it's not Rabbi Kiva. Continues the Gemara. Leima masnis in deleiker biyude ben bava. Could it be that our Mishnah is not arguing, is not conforming with the opinion of Rabbi Yudha ben Bava? Titnan, we learnt in another Mishnah, 
Rabbi Yehuda ben Bava Oimer, Ein Oisin Pasin Elol Be'er Horabim Bilvad. You can only make a, you rely on Pasim if it's also Be'er and also belongs to the Rabbim. V'ilu Hacha, in our Mishnah, Ketoni Lebirois, it says, you can always make Pasim Lebirois, Lo Yishna Do Rabbim, Lo Yishna Do Yachid, irrespective of if it belongs to a public or if it belongs to the, to a private person. And if in the Mishnah it says, you can always make Pasim Lebe'er, it's not like Rabbi Yehuda ben Bava who says that even a Be'er you can only make Pasim if it belongs to the Rabbim. Says the Gemara, no, Afilu Teimer Rabbi Yehuda ben Bava, even according to Rabbi Yehuda ben Bava we can have a reading in our Mishnah. When the Mishnah says, Oisin Pasim Lebe'erois, Be'erois is in plural tense. We thought it means any type of Be'er, irrespective of whether it belongs to a private person or a public person. That's how I've been learning till now. And then we see it's not like the Rabbi Yehuda ben Bava. But now the Gemara is suggesting that Birois doesn't mean any type of Be'er, meaning the, any type of owners, a Yochid or a Rabbim. It means all Be'erois in the world. Oisin Pasin, providing it belongs to the Rabbim, not to a Yochid. So the plural tense is not for the types of Be'erois, rather for the many Be'erois. But they all have to be one type, they have to belong to the Rabbim. My Birois, Birois the Alma, or the, the, the wells in the world that belong to the Rabbim. And then again, we have Rabbi Yehuda ben Bava, who's, who can make a reading with our Mishnah without it contradicting his opinion. Now the Gemara is asking one last word, My Diyumdin. The term that the Gemara used is, the Mishnah used was Arba Diyumdin. What does the word Diyumad mean? Omer Birmiu ben Eloza, Dioi Amudim, Dioi in Aramaic is two, Amudim are posts, a corner posts that has part, one side of it facing one direction and the other side 90 degrees facing another direction is a single corner which is a double post. It's called Diyumdin. And now that we've seen a phrase, a memra, a saying from Rabbi Yirmi ben Eloza, we're now going to bring another a list of seven quotes from Rabbi Yirmiya ben Eloza. And the simon, to remember them, is Dayoi. Some say it means the Dioi, the Diyumdin we just saw now also, but not only we're about to see there's another Diyu that he's going to speak about. Lemnuda, Shevach, Zunis, Niskalkel, Bemido, Shloisha. And if you look in the Vilna Gon on the side in Agar Sagra, he has it a bit differently. Diyu is one, that's the same. He doesn't say Le Menuda, he says Menuda. He, Shevach is the same. He doesn't say Zunis. He says instead of Zunis, he says Yoina. And then he's, and then the Vilna Gaon adds in another two, Bayis and Shte, because the Vilna Gaon saw in the Gemara that there's actually another couple of quotes. And then instead of Niskal, Niskalkil, he changes it to Niskalil. And then Bemido is the same and Shloisha is the same. That's a simon. It's printed in Shas, even though we don't know exactly what the simon, what the deeper messages behind this simon are. There are Sfarim that explain it, but the simon is there to help us remember. It's printed in Shas and one has to, one has to read it and learn it. And now we're going to see the seven quotes from Rabbi Yirmiya ben Eloza. Tnan Hasom, we learned in a Mishnah regarding the halachas of Dumai. We've already seen what is Demai. Demai means that Do Mai, which is this what. We don't know the status of fruits and vegetables that are bought from an Amhoretz. And we don't know did he take all the Trumas and Maestros in the way he should or not. And therefore the Allah is that under normal circumstances one should take the Trumas and Maestros again. There's a whole Masechta in Seder Zoraim called Demai with many Halachas. Says the Gemar, says the Mishnah. Rabbi Yehuda Oymer, Kol Hashitin Pturin. Any types of wild figs, poor quality figs, Pturim, we, the, one is potter from having to take Trumus and Maestras, even if we acquire them from an Amoret, since they are so cheap and very, almost no loss to the Amoret, there's no reason that the Amoret should refrain from taking the necessary Trumus and Maestras. We can take it for granted he took all the Trumus and Maestras. Chutzmin adyoifra, those types of shit in those types of wild figs which are called dyoifra, there 
they do have the halachas of Dumai, because over there they are a little bit more valuable, they're more expensive type of figs, and we have reason to believe that the Amharit didn't, he wanted to save himself the, those figs and therefore did not take the necessary trumas and maestras. Asks the Gemara, my Dioifra, what is Dioifra, which is this more expensive, more the higher quality type of fig? Oma'ula, Ilon Ha'oise Dioi Peirois Beshana. If Dioi, like we saw before, Dioi means two, a type of fig tree that produces figs twice a year, Dioi Peira, Dioifra, to it, produces fruits twice a year, that type of fig tree is more valuable and therefore the halachas of the halachas of demai apply. And this was not a halacha to do with the Birmia ben Eloza. It was just another halacha of dioi, of two. But now we're going to have the phrase, the first one of these seven halachas, of these seven quotes from the Birmia ben Eloza. Omer Birmia ben Eloza. Dioi paratsuf ponim we know that Adam Rishon, Hashem first created Adam Rishon. And then the Pasuk says at some point Hashem removed a tzela, a bone, a side, a tzela means a side, took something of Adam Rishon and built it up to create Chava. That's what it says explicitly in the Psukim. The question was what was before, what was after. Did Hashem create Adam as having a double parts of a parts of is a face is a figure is a human figure a, f- with a facial figure so d- was Adam Rishon created with a double figure that means he was back to back with Chava and they were one being but they were two 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 figures that were attached together and then Hashem separated them is that what happened or no did was Adam created one paratsuf with some type of a tzela, some type of an extension? We'll soon see what it is, and then Hashem removed that and made chava from that side, from that tzela. That's going to be the discussion here. So Birmia ben Elazo says, "Do paratsuf paratsuf ponim hoyoloil Adam Rishon? Adam Rishon he had two facial figures." Och shenema, as it says in the pasuk. In Tehillim, Ochir Vakedim Tsaratoni. The word Tsaratoni is a tsura, it was a form. Odom Rishon, when he was first formed, he was formed with a form at the front and a form at the back. Ochir means from the back, and Ponim means, Vakedim means from the front. Ochir Vakedim Tsaratoni. He had a tsura, he had a form on both sides. So you see that Du Paratsufim. So this is the first quote that we're seeing from Ibirmi Ben Eloza, Du. Two, he's telling us Adam Rishon had two forms when he was first created. Ksiv says in the Pasuk, now we're going to discuss this. The Pasuk says, When Hashem removed the side of Adam Rishon, he built it up to create Chava. And there was a Machlekes, Rav Shmuel, Chad Omar, one of the two held Paratsuf, that this Chava, this Tzela, she was a parts of she was a figure even before she was removed. And then we have to understand what Zimin Vayiva and the Gemara is going to discuss it. What was built up if she was already built up and she was just removed. The Chad Omar, the other opinion says, Zonov, a type of a tail, so to speak, was attached to Adam Rishain. And that side, that extension called Zonov, is what Hashem removed from Adam Rishain. And from there he built up Chava. And the Gemara explains, Bishleim Lemandoma Paratsuf, according to the opinion that says that Chava was a Paratsuf right from the beginning, Odom Rishon had two Paratsufim, Hainu Dechsev, we can understand, Ochoir Vokedem Tsaratoni, that he had a form at the front and a form at the back. Elo Lemando Amazonov, according to the opinion that he did not have that second form, it was just a type of a Zonov. My Ochir Vakedim Tsaratoni. What type of form did Odom Rishin have at the back? He didn't have a form, he just had a Zonov. Answers the Gemara Kudur Rav Ami. Rav Ami says, You're right. He, he only had one form. When it says Ochir Vakedim Tsaratoni, then that you formed me from the front and from the back, it doesn't mean that Odom had two forms a form at the front, a form at the back. No. 
it means that you created me with the the tchuna, with a certain property called ochir, and a property called ponim. That means the one parts of you created, you created it with a ochir property and a ponim property. There's something about front and something about back. And now we're saying that back doesn't mean behind, back means the last. There's something about Odom which was upon him, which was first, and there's something about Odom that was last. The Omer of Ami, Ocher Lemaiseberatius. Odom was created last in creation. There were six days of creation. The whole world was created, and right at the end, Odom was created. So that means he was created with being a, an end. That's the Ocher. And Vekedem, what part of Odom is first? Lupur Onyus. When misfortune happens, even though animals were created before Odom, but when misfortune happens, it will happen first to man and only afterwards to the animals. So the Gemara explains, We can understand that he was created with this property of being a last. He was created last. That was a fact. Chronologically speaking, the last being to be created was man. Delo Ibri ad Maila Shabsi, he was only created on Erev Shabbos. Elo Vokedem lo Peronio Ismahi, what does it mean that when misfortune falls, that Odom is the first? Where do we see that? Ilema Mishum Klola, are you talking about that when he got the curse, when he ate from the eight Adas, that he was the first one to get the curse? It's not true. Hobbit Chilon is Kalil Nochosh, the snake was cursed before Adam. Ulubasayf and after the snake, Niskalil Ochava. Chava was cursed, and only afterwards, Ulubasayf Niskalil Adam. So you see that Adam was the last one to get the curse. It cannot be that Kedem being a first is referring to the curse after he ate the Etadas. El Mabel, it's talking about when the creation was destroyed in the flood. Then over there it says, Vayimach is Kolayikum. Then Hashem, he blotted out all of existence. Ashal Pneu Adoma that was on the face of the earth, me Odom ad behemoth, starting with man and finishing with animal. So you see that at least when the Posok speaks about the, the beings that were destroyed it, at the flood, man was mentioned first and only afterwards animal. And now the Gemara is continuing with this Machlekes, Rav and Shmuel, was Odom Rishon a double paratsuf? Or was he just a single paratsuf? Bishlei Milaman de Omar paratsuf. According to the opinion that says that Od Chava was a full figure, be, even before she was separated, and Odom Rishon was first made as a double figure. Hainu dechsev vayitzer. When Hashem created man, it uses the term vayitzer, and he formed. And the word vayitzer, and he formed, train yudin, has two yuds in it, so to speak, to tell us that there was a double form. It's a plural type of form. El Olamando Amazonov, according to the opinion that says that Odom was created a single form, just that he had a Zonov that later became Chava, Mai Vayitzer. Then what's the extra Yud telling us in the word Vayitzer? Answers the Gemara, could Rib Shimon ben Pazi. Rib Shimon ben Pazi asked this question, the Omer Rib Shimon ben Pazi. He says that when Odom was created, and he was the first of creations that was created with Bechira, free choice. Having free choice means you have Hashem to listen to on one side, you have the Yitzhahara who's pulling you to the other side. And Odom said, Oili miyitzri, woe to me because of my evil inclination. Oili miyitzri, woe to me from my creation. I can only ever make any one of them happy. I can either make my Yitzhar, my creator, happy, or I can make my Yitzhar, my evil inclination, happy. I can never make them both happy at the same time. So that's why Yitzhar, Odom Arishna, was created with, so to speak, with two powers, so to speak, that were dominating him, dominating him, Hashem and the Yitzhahara, and we have free choice to make sure to make the right choices. So continues the Gemara. According to the opinion that says that Adam Rishon was a double form, it says in the Pasuk, When I first created them, in plural, I created them, plural, 
male and female, because Hashem created Odom as a double figure, a man at the front, a woman at the back. According to the opinion that says that Chava was never a form, was never a figure, before she was separated, and when Hashem first created man, it was only Odom, what does it mean he created them man and woman? Answers the Gemara look at Durbavo. The Omer Durbavo Romi. Durbavo actually asked a contradiction, a seeming contradiction in the Psukim. Ksiv in one place it says, Zachor Unakeva Baraam. He created them male and female. Which would seem to be that Hashem created the two forms, the two figures, simultaneously at the same time. Uchsivan is another Pasuk that says, Ki Betzelem Eloikim Bara Oisoi that he created Adam with a tselem, with a single tselem, with a single form, seeming to be that it was only Adam and Chava was just a mere zonov, she was not a fully formed figure. How did he explain it? Bitchila also b'machshava livrei shnaim, that when Hashem first intended and he planned the creation of man, he planned that they would be two. And that's indeed how we have it today. They were separated, they were two. That means as far as the initial plan was, it was already planned from the start, they would be two. That's what it means, Zohar and Nekeva Bura Om. It doesn't mean I actually created them as two. It means I intended them to be two. And therefore, even according to the opinion that says Zonov, he intended them to become two at a later point. But whilst when he actually created them he created them one and this is true both according to the opinion that says it was one parrot of or two parrots of him either way they were not separate figures they were either just one figure with a zone of or they were two figures that were merged and later Hashem separated them to make them into two figures because that's what Hashem initially planned is that they should be two distinct and individual beings Continues the Gemara, Bishle Milamandoma Paratsov, according to the opinion that says that Chava was a fully formed figure even before she was separated. Hainu Dirsiv, that's what it says, Vayisker Bosor Tachteno. After Hashem removed this Tzela, this side of Odom, then he filled its place with flesh. So we can understand that. There was a whole figure back to back attached to Odom. Hashem severed the two. A splitting Chava from Odom. Now there was a raw opening on the whole back of Odom. Hashem replaced it with flesh. We can understand that. Elolamando Amrazonov, according to the opinion who says that the the part of Odom from which Chava was formed was just a zonov. What does it mean? Vayiskur Boso Tachteno. That Hashem in it, in her place, in its place, filled up with flesh. There was no place. It was just a little tail. Says the Gemara Omer Zvid. It's a question of, of who said it, but the answer is Even if it was just a tail, the place where it was removed, that place had to be replaced with flesh. And that's what it's talking about. Continues the Gemara. And now we're going back to a pasuk that we started with. Bishlei milamando amar zonov, according to the opinion who says that Chava, before she became Chava, was just a zonov, a little extension of Adam Rishon, Hainu Dechsev Vayiven. Then we can understand that after Hashem removed the side of Adam to become Chava, He built her up because it was just a cell. It was just a zonov. Hashem had to build up the zonov and create a human figure from it. Elo Lemandoma Paratov, but the opinion who says that right from the start Chava was a fully formed figure attached to Adam, which Hashem removed it. May Vayiven. What had to be built up? She was already built from the start. She just had to be removed. Answers the Gemara. Look at Reb Shimon ben Menasia. The Dorish Reb Shimon ben Menasia. Vayiven Hashem Elokim Esatzela. It doesn't mean the pasuk says Hashem built up the side. It doesn't mean he created a human figure from the side. No, he took the human figure of the side and he did an act of building to it. It means even though she was already a human figure, there was something that was done to her that was an extended building. What was that? Hashem braided Chavo's hair and that way with a plaited braided hair Hashem showed 
brought Chava in front of Odom, showed Chava to Odom. Shekain Bekroche Ayam, in the cities out at sea, they call Koirin Lekliosa Bniosa. They call a, a braided, something braided, they call it Binyosa, they call it a type of a building, a building of a figure. So you see that Vayiven doesn't mean he created the humanness of her form, no. He braided her hair, and that was a building that was done to her. Dava Akhir. Another explanation of what could Hashem have done to an already existing human figure that's called building. Omer of Chizda. Lob it was either a Braisa or was of Chizda. Melamed Shebon O HaKadosh Baruch Hu Hashem built Chavo Kabinyan. That means when she was first attached to Odom Rishon, Hashem hadn't done this yet. When he separated Chava from Adam. At that point, Hashem did this building, Kabinyan. He formed her like a building. And what type of binyan? Kabinyan Oitzer. An Oitzer is a storehouse, and the storehouse has a very unique type of shape. Ma Oitzer Zet. In the same way as this storehouse, Verochov Milamato Vekotzer Milamalo. In order that the fruits and all the produce inside the storehouse should not put too much pressure onto the walls of the storehouse, then it would have a very wide base and it would get narrower as it gets to the top. <clears throat> in order that the wider base will be able to contain the fruits that you want to store in the storehouse, Kedele Kabbalis Aperis, in order to contain the produce. For Isha, so to the woman, Rechavo Milamata Oktsoro Milamailo, even though right at the top it's very narrow, but the womb gradually gets wider in order to be able to contain a child. If it would be very narrow at the bottom of the womb, then the child would not be able to form there. So Hashem at that point, after he separated Chava from Adam, Hashem created her womb in such a way that the widest part of the womb is lowest down. Kedele Kabel is Vlad in order to contain a child. And that's what it means, Vayiven, that's what Hashem did to Chava when he separated her. And what does it say after that? After Hashem built up Chava, Vayivieho Ela Adam, he brought her to Adam. He didn't just let Chava find her way to Adam, finish the operation, go find your husband. Hashem brought her, escorted her to Adam. What do we see from here? That Hashem became a Shushvin. A Shushvin is literally translated as a friend, as somebody who's helping to be Mesamech, to, to, to make a Chosn and the Kala happy, and to escort the color to the chasna, and Hashem did this. He made the arrangements for the chasna, for the wedding. Mikan, from here you see Le Godil, even a very prominent person, Sheyase Sheshvinus Le Cotton, he should be the Shushvin, the friend, making, taking care of the chasna, even for somebody of much lower stature than him. Valier Aloy, and it should not disturb him, because you see that even Hashem himself, the creator of world, the, the, the creator himself, he escorted Chava to Adam. Continues the Gemara, Ulamando Oma Paratsov, according to the opinion that when Adam was first created, he was created with a double figure, a double form. One side of him was Adam, and the back, the other side, was Chava. Hai Minayu Sagi Beresha. Who was, work, who was the one that was walking forwards and who was the one that was dragging behind? Omer of Nachman by Yitzchok, Mistabra de Zohar Sagi Beresha. It makes sense, it's logical that the male was, was the one that was leading, was walking ahead. The Tanya. The Brisa says, Lo odom isho A person should not walk behind a woman when walking. Vafiluhi ishto, even if it's his own wife. Nizdamno ala gesher. What happens if a woman happened to be in front of him when he's crossing a bridge? He shall cannot let stod him. He should try and overtake her. He should pass her as quickly as he can in order to walk in front of the woman and not behind the woman. V'chol ha'oyver achire isho benohor. Somebody who passes behind a woman as she's wading through a river, and this is not talking about if it's his wife, it's talking about if it's somebody else's wife, he loses his portion in the world to come. Tonu Rabbonon, we learned in a b'raisa, Hamaratze, Hamaratze mois le'isha miyodoi le'yodo. 
if somebody is counting out woman and giving it from his hand, passing it directly into her hand as you're counting the coins, or he's taking it from her hand directly into his hand, is he's doing this in order to gaze at her, to have an opportunity to, to gaze at her. Even if this person is comparable to Moshe Rabbeinu, who received the Torah at Sinai, he's not going to be freed from Gehenim, from, from the judgment of Gehenim. And to this type of person, the Pasuk says, Yod le Yod, hand to hand, Lo Yinokera will not be freed from evil, which means yod le yod, if you pass from your hand to her hand, or from her hand to your hand, with the intention of gazing at her, then lo yinoke ro, lo yinoke medina shel gehenim, you're not going to be freed from this evil, which is the judgment of Gehenim. Omer of Nachman, a related issue, monoyach ho am ho'oret hoyo, monoyach, who was the father of Shimshain, and he was following his wife. He was an Amha Oretz. That's what Ula, Rav Nachman, sorry, Rav Nachman takes on that he was an Amha Oretz. He was an ignorant man. Shenemer, as it says in the Pasuk, Vayokom Vayelech Monoyach Achiri Ishtay. It says that Monoyach arose and he followed his wife. He clearly hadn't learned that one should not follow, one should not walk behind a woman, even if it's his own wife. He's not learned, he's an ignorant person. He was an Amha Oretz. Maskiflor of Nachman by Yitzhak. Rav Nachman Bayitzhak asks a question on this, on, on Rav Nachman. And you see here that Rav Nachman Bayitzhak and Rav Nachman are two different people. Elo me'ata, according to what you're saying now, gabe al kono. We know that the holy al kono, dirsiv, that it says, vayelech al kono achrei ishto. It says that al kono followed his wife. Hachanami, are you going to suggest that he was an Amoretz? Chas v'shalom, how can you say such a thing? Vigabe Elisha, the Novi Elisha. Also, Dechsev, it says in the Pasuk, Vayokom Vayelech Achareo, he arose and he followed her. Also, he went behind a woman. You're suggesting he was an Amoretz? Chas v'shalom to say such a thing, Hachanami? It can't be. Elo Acharei Dvoreo Vatsoso. And it says Acharei, it doesn't mean he was following behind her. It meant he was following her words, he was following her advice. So, if so, according to Rav Nachman Bayitzok, even Monoyach, when it says that Vayokom Vayelech Monoyach Acharei Ishtoy, it doesn't mean he was following behind his wife. It meant he was following his wife's advice. Hochanami Acharei Dvoreo Vatsoso. You have no source to say that Monoyach was an Amharet. He didn't walk behind his wife. Omer Vashi, Ulmaid Omer of Nachman, Monoyach Amoret Hoyo, according to Rav Nachman, who held that Monoyach was walking behind his wife because he was an ignorant person, not only was he an ignorant person, a filo beirav nami loikoro, he hadn't even learned the psukim that young children learn in school. Dechsiv, Vatokom, Rivka, that Rivka rose, Venari Seho, with her maidens, Vatir Kavno, Alagmalim, and they were riding on the camels, ho'ish, and they were going, they were proceeding after, behind the man, which is, was Eliezer. Ish, and not in front of man. So you see explicitly that it's appropriate to, for a woman not to be in front of a man. Omer of Yechanan, another related quote, Achayre ari v'loy achayre isha. One, it's better to walk behind a lion than to walk behind a woman. Achiri isha, it's better to walk behind a woman, and not to walk behind an avodazara, an idol. It's true that if you walk behind an idol, you may get attracted to the idol. It's a risk. And therefore, try and avoid it but better to walk behind a woman and make sure that your mind stays in the right place. But if the other option is to walk behind a shul uh, at the time where people are davening and to walk behind it and not go into the shul, it looks as if you're being a koifer, as if you couldn't care about Hashem that they're davening to, that's the worst. And therefore, rather go behind an idol, but do not walk behind a shul when people are davening there. And now we're moving to the next quote of Rabbi Yirmiyah ben Eloza. 
ואומר בירמיה בן אלוזה, כל אויסון השונים, all those years, שהיה אודום רישן בנידוי, that אודום רישן, so to speak, was excommunicated, he was in a type of a ban, as a punishment for having eaten from the Eitz Hadas, from the fruits that he was not allowed to eat, הוילד רוחין ושיידין ולילין, then he, so to speak, gave birth to all sorts of evil כייחס. One is called Ruchin, one's called Shadin, one's called Lilin. Shenem, as it says in the Pasuk, Vayichi Odom Shloishim Ma'as Shono, that Odom Rishon lived 130 years, Vayoyled Bid Musay Kitzalmoy, and only then he gave birth to human beings, to people that were like, in this, like him and in the same image as him. Michlal, so we can, it's implied from there, Da'adu Idna, until that point, for 130 years, Lav Bitzalmoy Olid. His children, the, those things that he gave birth to, were not physical beings in the image of Adam Rishain. What were they? Ruchin, Shadim, Velilin. Asks the Gemara Meisve, Hoyo Reb Meir Oimer. Reb Meir says, Adam Rishin Chosid Godl Hoyo. Adam Rishin was a very, very pious person. Kivan Sherosh, a nickness on Misal Yodai, when he saw that the death penalty had been given to man and to all of existence because of him, because he ate from the forbidden fruits, Yoshav Betainis Meo Shleishim Shona, he actually fasted for 130 years, Upirish Mine Isha, and he stayed, he stayed apart from his wife, Meo Ushleishim Shona, 130 years. Vehelo Zorze Te'inim, and he took a belt made of fig branches and he wore them albasoro on his skin for 130 years and that was very uncomfortable. He did that as self-inflicting pain in order to atone for the Avera that he did. And if he stayed away from his wife and had no relationship with his wife, then how could he have given birth? It doesn't matter to what. But how can you give have a child? It doesn't matter if it's Ruchin Shadin Velilin if you don't have a wife, if you're not having any relationships with your wife? Answers the Gemara, Kiko Omrino Nahu B'Shechva Zera D'Choza L'Onse. It's not talking about typical birth consequent to having a relationship with his wife. It's talking about the, the, the Shechva Zera that came out of him involuntarily. It happened over the 130 years and from those bits, those little bits of Shechva Zera, these forms, the Ruchin Shadin Velilin, were created. Continues the Gemara, another quote from Rabbi Yirmiya ben Eloza. V'oma Rabbi Yirmiya ben Eloza. Miktsas shvochi shel odom oimim lefonov. When praising a person in front of him, one should only mention part of a person's praise, not all of it. V'kuloi shelei befonov. But when you're praising him in his absence, then you can praise him fully. Where do we see this from? Miktsas shvochi befonov. Where do we see that in front of a person you should only give partial praise. When Hashem was speaking directly to Noach, he said, I've seen you to be a tzaddik, to be righteous before me in this generation. He only mentioned the term tzaddik. But when you're in the absence of a person, you should say all his praise. The Chsivit says in the Pasuk, when Hashem was talking about Noach, but not to Noach, it says, Noach ish tzaddik tomim. Not only was he a righteous person, he was, tom- he was a tzaddik and he was tomim, he was perfect. Hoyo b'deroisov in his generations, Hashem added on the added praise of tomim that he was perfect, he was sholim. Another teaching from Rabbi Yirmi ben Eloza, V'om Rabbi Yirmi ben Eloza, Ma'idichsiv, when it says in the Pasuk, V'hine alei zayis torof b'fiha, the dove, when it came back to Noach, after it had been away to search for some dry land, it came back and it had plucked an olive leaf, and he brought that back to Odom, to Noach, sorry, he brought it back to Noach, and this was a sign that some place, somewhere, there must be trees already growing. What was he trying to allude to by bringing especially the leaf of an olive? Omra Yoino Borchu. Yoino said, the Yoino, the dove, meant to say to Hashem, Rabbeinu Shalaylam, Hashem, Master of the World, I rather my food is as bitter as an olive, but I should feel totally dependent and reliant 
only on you, rather than having food that is sweet as honey, and I should be dependent on mortal flesh and blood on a person like the Yoyin had been till now. He had been in the Teva and he was relying on Noach. And now the Yoyin came back with a message saying, I'd rather eat bitter food and be dependent on Hashem rather than be dependent on man. Where do we see that food? Where do we see that the, in this posuk of Ali Zai's Torah of Pefiu, where do we see that he's alluding to sustenance? Because it says, Ksiv Torah. The posuk says that he brought back Ali Zai's Torah of So normally Torah means it was plucked away from the word trefer, it was plucked away. And that's the, the, the literal translation of the word. Ksiv hacha Torah, for Ksiv Hasam, and in another pasuk it says, Hatrifeni lechem chuki, feed me my portion of bread. The word Torah can also mean to feed me. So you see clearly that the word Torah means food, and therefore the Yoyinu was trying to tell Hashem, I'd rather have teref, I'd rather have the food bitter, but from you, rather than from sweet and having to rely on some on, on man. And now the Gemara continues with another quote from Rabbi Yirmiya ben Elazar. V'omer Rabbi Yirmiya ben Elazar, Kol ba'iz shenishmoim boi divrei Torah balayla, any home that the words of Torah are heard in it in the night, shuv einu nechrav will never be destroyed. Shenemar, as it says in the Pasuk, v'loi omar ayei eloi'a oisoi, and he will not say, he does not say, where is Hashem, our cre- my Creator, who will never have to ask, where's Hashem? Who will never be in that type of stress? No saints mirois balayla, somebody who gives song at night, referring to the words of Torah, which are compared to a song. Continues the Gemara, another quote from Rabbi Yirmiya ben Elazar. V'omer Rabbi Yirmiya ben Elazar, miyoyim shechorav beis hamikdash, from the time that the beis hamikdash was destroyed, dayoy la'oylam sheishtamish b'shtei oisiyos. The world, it's enough for the world to use two of the four letters of Hashem's name. We know that Hashem's name is Yud K Vov K, and after the Beis Amigdosh was destroyed, only the first two letters, Yud K, are used as Hashem's name, but the full name, Yud K Vov K, which was used in the Beis Amigdosh and was read in the way it was written, this, we, that does not happen after the Chorban Beis Amigdosh. Shenemer, as it says in the Pasuk, Kol Hanashama Tahalil Ka Haluluka, that all souls are going to praise Hashem. The only one of Hashem's names that are used is one that all souls are allowed to use, and that's the shame Ka, the first two letters of Hashem's name, and to the exclusion of a name that's not allowed to be used by all souls. It was only allowed to be used by the Kayanim in the Beis Amigdosh. After the Beis Amigdosh, we no longer have that. Continues the Gemara, another quote from Rabbi Yirmiya ben Elazo, Om Rabbi Yirmiya ben Elazo, Niskalelo Bovel Niskalelu Shechener. When Bovel was cursed, then its neighbors were also cursed. Niskalelo Shemroin, when Shemroin was cursed, Nisborchu Shechener, then its neighbors were, when Nisborich, its neighbors were, were blessed. The neighbors of Shemroin is the north of Eretz Israel. Niskalelo Bovel Niskalelu Shechener. Where do we find that when Bovel got cursed, its neighbors also got cursed? The Chsivit says in the Pasuk, V'samtiha l'moyresh kipoid v'agmei moim. I will make her, referring to Bovel, an estate of wild birds and pools of water. Bekitza, what it means is that wild animals and are going to inhabit the wasteland of Bovel. And these are going. These wild animals are also going to dis- disturb and destroy the neighboring places of Bovel. Where do we see that when Shemroin was cursed, its neighbors, referring to the north of Eretz Israel, are blessed? The Chesivet says in the pasuk, "V'samti Shemroin le'i hasode." I will make Shemroin like a heap in a field, lematoi kerem, a place for planting vineyards, that after Shemroin was destroyed, then Shemroin itself became very fertile land, and these fertile lands became became a blessing for the neighboring places, namely the north of Eretz Israel. 
And in Mirza Hashem, in the next year, we're going to continue from here the next quotes of Rabbi Yirmiya ben Elazar.